1993, uh, Lee, who's still a dear friend of mine, uh, called, called me up and said, you know, Murray Shaw, who's on the board of ACC, is going to be appointed by the governor to be a regent at Stephen F. Austin. He's going to have to resign from the board of ACC. You ought to do that. And I said, well, I, you know, I know ACC a little. Uh, never been a real, uh, you know, passion in my life. Uh, I said, no. <laughs> anyway, as it turned out, the board uh, decided not to have an appointment, but to leave it to the election in 1994. At my birthday party in January 1994, Lee came, came up to me and said, you really need to run for this position. You will really be good at it. And I said, no. <laughs> he called me the following week, and, it, and I said, you're straining my, our friendship, Lee. <laughs> and in any case, he, uh, he said to me, he said to me, listen, if you run, go file, and then the filing's opening, and uh, go file for the position. There will be nobody opposed. You will not be opposed. You know, you've, you, you, it's, and, and you'll, yeah, six years is a big commitment. So I, I finally said, okay, I will go file for the office. I went and filed, or whatever the date was in January, when the filing had opened, or, and uh, no, no sooner than hmm, two to three days later, I had two opponents. <laughs> and, and I said, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to run a campaign and do, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, in any case, the, the bottom line of that it was, was uh, I was elected in a runoff uh, uh, in uh, June of 1994, and began to serve uh, immediately thereafter as a board member. Getting onto the board of an institution uh, like ACC, uh, oh well, you think you know everything. And what was very clear about a month into my uh, tenure I, is I know nothing about the community colleges. The most important thing is when, you, when you're elected, Go there knowing you don't know, <laughs> and you really have to learn, and you really have to take the time and the effort to get professional development, basically. Understand what a, what a board member does on a community college board. Understand the community college movement. I knew about community college and junior college, but I didn't know about it. I didn't really understand what it was about, and I didn't understand what the missions really were. I recall this, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks after I was elected, right before I was sworn in, uh, getting a delivery at my house of three boxes. And I mean, three boxes. You know, it was like, okay, so now what am, what am I supposed to do with this? So I opened the boxes up and I said, here's all this stuff, you know? But the two things that, that were really shocking to me was these two seven inch binders entitled Book One of Board Policies and Book Two of Board Policies. And I'm going, oh my goodness. <laughs> and clearly there was 400, maybe more, more pages of policies, policies on everything you could imagine. You know, uh, what the ACC jazz band, how to, how to raise the flag in front of the building. <laughs> I mean, it was just that detailed. And, and I'm going, you know, this is not really <laughs> what we should be doing. We as a board decided that that was not the way we wanted to govern and, and operate, and we went to uh, started going to a policy governance system. Uh, that in itself took three to four years. We basically, and I mean, we spent hours and hours of, off a board meeting just going through these policies. Do we want to keep that policy? Does it mean something uh, to as a board to govern? Do we want to throw all of these away? You know, like you clean up your house, you, you put it in three piles, <laughs> right? You know, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to I'm I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to give it to someone else, and I'm going to throw all of this away because it means nothing. The other success is we really kind of began to look at the college, at the 25, 30 thousand feet, not at what you know, was going on at these science labs or, you know, and that kind of kind of thing. And it, it, it made for better governing, it really did. And so I think it was successful in that way. Was it perfect? Probably not. 
uh, uh, we, we sometimes do get dragged into things that we probably should not be dragged into, and that's because we uh, you know, have constituents. We have constituents we have to respond to, and those constituents are, are very broad. Uh, I'm not only talking about taxpayers and voters, I'm talking about faculty, there's our constituents, staff is our uh, constituency, students, the most important constituency. We're nine board members at ACC, uh, and we speak with one voice, and the board does not take a position unless it's voted on, and, and at that point, if, being, if you're a good board member, you, say, you support the majority. Here in, in the Austin area, uh, AACC grew out of a need to have a two-year college. And the AISD, the, uh, the Independent School District, was the group that started it, basically. But we, they started without a tax base, without taxing the public. So you're right, we've, it was poor in, in that sense, in that we had tuition and state funding. And somewhere in 1981, I think it might have been, the state began to push to say, hey, you know, there are 50 districts and you're the only one in the entire state that isn't taxing, you know, your, your, uh, your district. And they wonder, well, how come we have to give you all this money? Because you, you're not taxing. And, and by 19, in 1985 legislative, Thing. They had basically quietly threatened to, to, to stop state funds. What happened was uh, they uh, put on the ballot um, a five cents cap. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was a tax. And, uh, and so that passed. Uh, over over uh, strong, second time, the second time. Yeah, it. strong up. I mean, yeah. there was an organized was anti tax. Yes, that's right. absolutely. There was a very strong opposition to it. It, it probably grew not only out of people who just don't want to pay for anything, but also grew from the fact that, uh, and it was the, this kind of theme that, hey, the University of Texas is here. Why do we need to, to pay? You know, we got this big, wonderful university. In any case, it passed and put, still put the college under pretty strong restraints in that we could not go over that five cents. Uh, the one, the state average, probably at the time was 12 or 13 cents. I think my first budget, the state portion uh, was something around 56 percent of what, of the monies we had, the revenues we had, about 56 percent. Tuition and the very little tax made up, made up the rest. Uh, today, I think this budget, the state is making up 16 percent. So I mean, you could you you really begin to understand that if they were putting in 56 percent in appropriations, and now it's 16, that's huge. So we're we've made it up uh, with being very smart about how we use our money, but also how we were able to expand the tax base over the, over the last uh, 12, 13 years. And also, uh, we went to the voters in 03 and said, folks, would, we really need to raise this cap. And the voters said yes. And they, we raised the cap to nine cents, where it sits today. I think the thing I'm most proud of, I guess, is the fact that one, each one of these people is a, a person. Okay, there, and whether it's been a quarter of a million or 300,000, whatever it has been, uh, their life is better because of the college. Their, their, their families are better because of the college. Their whole quality of what they're doing is better because the college has helped educate them. And so that's clearly the most th thing I'm very much proud of. Uh, and you know, and as, as I said, I started. It was a rocky start, but it became a passion. You can come to ACC. You can do a year, two years, uh, and and transfer to the universities, and you get a great education. 
and that's and the quality is what really kind of and this I have nothing but so much praise for our faculty because it really it wouldn't work even though it's less expensive if it wasn't quality. People are, you know, who are active in the community now look at ACC as an economic development tool. It's the first thing that companies ask now. When I'm thinking of coming to, to Austin, we want to open a branch. We want to open, you know, we want to move the company to Austin. What's your community college look like? Does it supply employees in my, my, in my industry? Can, can it? Uh, uh, it's that different, it's a different mindset. And we've, we've kind of adopted that mindset, which I think has been very good for the college uh, in our purchase of Highland and what we're doing uh, to help the community in a, in a larger sense, driving economic development, taking a blighted mall and, and making it something that the community not only be proud of, but wants, they want part of the, to be part of the community. And so it's kind of that kind of thinking that I've seen change from, okay, we're just, you know, we're gonna go, yeah, we'll offer courses and we'll do that and that's great, and to, you know, we're really a part of the community and we're really, you know, all our people sit on boards all over the community now whether it's nonprofit boards, whether whether it's, you know, chambers or or Lions Club or Rotary Club. We've gotten into the culture of the community and I think you, you know, if ACC went and disappeared tomorrow, this community would be devastated. <laughs>